the fact that now, of course, Ramadan is over and the devils are set free. Many of the youth, not to mention other people, <laughs> um, adults as well, will revert to their bad habits of watching television. Could you shed some light on the issue of watching television and its harmful effects? Television does multiple times more harm than good. It harms a person spiritually, morally, socially, and economic-wise. There are various, you can give a talk only on the ill effects of only on television. Number one is that I call it rather, it's a khutwa to shaitan. It's the footstep of the devil for many reasons. Number one is that it many a time prevents a person from offering salah. A person gets addicted to the TV. So Muslims, though he realizes the time, he's okay, I'll pray after five minutes, after five minutes, and he watches the program, the soap, or the opera, or whatever it is, and he misses salah. Number two, there is too much of obscenity on the television. Normal channels that you see, the entertainment channels, you find so much of obscenity. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 30, say to the believing man that he should lower his gaze and guard his modesty. Whenever a man looks at a woman, if any unashamed thought, any brazen thought comes in a man, he should lower his gaze. The next verse speaks for the woman, Surah Nur, chapter 24, verse number 31. Say to the believing woman that she should lower her gaze and guard her modesty. That when she looks at any man and any unashamed thought comes, she should lower the gaze. So now, how can a Muslim watch television on which you find ladies without hijab, immodest, many of them, the clothes that they wear, they expose more of the body than cover their body. So, but natural, most of the channels that you see, more than 99%, you can safely say, more than 99% are haram, as far as Islam is concerned. People give excuses, oh, why not news channels? Even news channels, the ladies that they come, you know, they dress up, they're not having hijab, etc. And the obscenity that is there, it is tremendous. And there are many reports, which if time permits, I'll tell you later on. So first is obscenity on the television. Number two is the extravagance. That when we see any channel, the advertisements, they entice a person to buy things which are not required. You may see a latest car that's launched in the market, and your desire will be there to buy it. You may want a very big house, or things which aren't required of luxury extravagance, as Allah says in the Quran in Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 26 and 27. They do not be extravagant, do not be a spendthrift. For verily, the person who is a spendthrift is the brother of the devil. The fourth point is that it leads unnecessary. There's too much of glamour and fame. The person tries to get involved in that glamorous world, seeing the actors and the other people, and they try and imitate them, they try and emulate them. They become the idols and they become the heroes rather than Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Sahabas. Number five is that there's too much of violence on the television. And that really influences the person's lifestyle. And there are several reports on that too. Furthermore, there's too much of drug addiction, there's too much of fighting, etc., which a person gets involved, you know, oh, some people, you know, it's nice to have drugs. When a person, a young person sees that, he tries to at least try it out. And that's how drug addiction increases, alcoholism increases, and there are various. Just to cut short, I'll just give you some of the reports. There's a special report done only on the effect of television on children. And since 1950, more than a thousand surveys and researches were done on the effects of television on children and young adults. And according to a survey which was present in the Senate Committee of Judiciary in USA in 1999, it says that because of young children and young adults watching television, it makes their lifestyle violent. They're aggressive and they're unsocial. According to the report of Houston, a survey was conducted in 1992, by the time a child reaches the age of 18, and if he watches television, the average hours that a person in the USA watches, he would have viewed 200,000 violent acts on television and 40,000 murders. Imagine what impact it will have on that young mind. According to a report of the American Council of Pediatrics in the year 2001, it says that death in children and young adults and adolescents only due to violence 
that is homicide, suicide, and trauma, is much more than the diseases, much more than cancer, much more than congenital heart disease, the deaths caused by these violence. And furthermore, according to research done by the Kaiser Foundation in the 2005, it said that on an average, an average American child watches television every week for 44 and a half hours. That means every day he watches television and sits in front of the computer game or in front of the computer screen, all put together for about six and a half hours every day. That is, there's no other activity does more than sitting in front of the television screen or the computer screen more than sleeping. Sleeping is the only thing where he may sleep more. Otherwise, any activity that he does, maximum is this. And the impact it has on the lifestyle, on the behavior is drastically negative. There were researches done on what effect does a video album has. You know, you have a lot of video albums coming up and dancing and singing and music. It takes a person away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, I say it's Khudu Atu Shaitan. There are researches on the sex shown on this television. It's tremendous. Maximum number of channels on the satellite TV. In America, it's pornography channels. In UK, it's pornography channels. The maximum profit, the percentage of profit made by any channels are the pornography channels. And the cheapest to run a channel is the pornography channels. And even the entertainment channels have started getting obscenity on it to attract the people. And people get slowly and slowly alluded towards it. And India, which is a conservative country, Eastern part of the world, maybe a few decades back, when we see the way the movies were made in India, if they had to show a love scene, they used to show two flowers. That's it, indicating love scene. Later on, we had the hero heroine, they're running around the tree to show a love scene. Now, you see them openly kissing on the street, in the movies, even sleeping in bed. And it's very normal. So that's how you know it started with just showing a symbolic love making was flowers. And then we see today that open, openly sleeping and showing all the scenes and all. And it's even getting into the normal film television channels. Then you have the fashion TV and all these, you know. Therefore, we are very particular that in our school, all the children who are studying in our school, in their house, in their family, there should be no cable TV. Even if they want to see peace TV, if they have a private dish where only peace TV comes, it's permitted. But if they have the cable TV along with peace TV, if another 100 or 80 haram channels come, we say, don't see peace TV. Or the Islamic Sharia says, let a small loss take place to prevent a big loss. So the bigger loss is the haram channels. The small benefit is the peace TV. But best is to have only peace TV. Have a decoder, see the channel, that's fine. And there are very few channels which are Islamic and getting people to the straight path, very few. The percentage will be less than 1% of the channels. So we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have more channels. And even the Islamic channels should see to it that they're on the Quran and Sunnah, that's important. Because even they get deviated with this media, the film industry, you know, trying to get more popular. Slowly, slowly, they try and deviate. So we pray that we be on the straight path. So this is just in short, the few ill effects of TV. And you can go talk on this. Yes. Well, Jazakallah khair, once again. Dr. Zakir for that answer. Dr. Zakir, since uh, Ramadan is the month of, that trains your mind towards patience, could you tell the viewers about the significance of patience? As far as the word patience is concerned, that is sabr, it's mentioned in the Quran 102 times. And it is one of the most important virtues in Islam. And through patience, you can come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Quran says in several places that Allah is with those who are patient. Allah says in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 45, that seek Allah's help with patience, perseverance, and prayer. And it is indeed hard, except for those who are humble. Allah says in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 153, Ya ayyuhal lazina am manus ta'inu sabri wa That, O oh, you believe, seek Allah's help with patience, perseverance, and prayer. For verily, Allah is with those who patiently persevere. Allah repeats a similar message in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 155 to verse number 157, that surely we will test you with something of fear and hunger, with loss of goods and lives and fruits of toils. 
and those are successful, those who patiently persevere.